For the past several centuries, there has been general agreement that there is a limit to the number of times something can be broken in half and still remain the same substance. The reason we believe this is that all matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms. Furthermore, these atoms are in constant motion, whether the material they make up is a solid or a liquid. Each individual atom moves randomly, confined by other atoms, which are also moving. In a gas, more space is available for each individual molecule to move randomly. Some questions about atoms puzzled scientists for years. What makes atoms of one element different from atoms of another element? And why is it that some atoms like helium do not readily react with each other or with atoms of other elements? Well, atoms of elements such as hydrogen react with each other to form two atom or diatomic molecules. These same atoms may also react with other atoms like chlorine or carbon to form a tremendous number of different types of molecules. Why all these different interactions between atoms? The answer to this question lies in a close examination of the structure of the atom itself. Early models of the atom visualized matter consisting of numerous atoms whose mass was spread evenly throughout each atom. However, Work by Ernest Rutherford in 1911 showed that the mass of the atom was concentrated in a very tiny portion of the atom, which he called the nucleus. This nucleus is positively charged. Rutherford predicted that the positive charge of the nucleus was balanced by the negative charges of tiny particles called electrons. Eventually, Rutherford showed that one or more positively charged particles called protons give the nucleus its positive charge. About two decades later, James Chadwick discovered that neutral particles, or neutrons, are also found in the nucleus. These three particles, the electron, the proton, and the neutron, are the building blocks of which all atoms are made. Although, to equal the mass of one proton, it takes 1,837 electrons. But the charge on one electron exactly neutralizes the charge on one proton. The proton is heavier than the electron, but the neutron, on the other hand, is slightly heavier than the proton. Between them, protons and neutrons account for almost the entire mass of the atom. The volume they occupy as the nucleus of the atom is incredibly small. If an atom is drawn to such a scale that a nucleus appears to be two centimeters in diameter, then the nearest nucleus found in the next atom would have to be drawn at least 400 meters away. This would mean that very dense materials like lead at the atomic level are almost entirely empty space. Neutrons play a significant role in determining the mass of an atom.
The number of protons in the nucleus, however, positively identifies the atom. If an atom has only one proton in its nucleus, that atom is hydrogen, whether the nucleus has no neutrons, one neutron, or two neutrons. All three of these types of hydrogen, or isotopes, have very similar physical properties and identical chemical properties. They exist as clear, colorless gases. They burn with a very pale blue flame to form water. They differ only in physical properties that involve mass. A nucleus with two protons can only be helium. One with six protons, carbon. And 92 protons, uranium. The nucleus is not at all changed during a chemical reaction in which substances are heated or put under pressure. As a matter of fact, the nucleus of any atom remains unaltered when its atom bonds with another atom. To understand how and why atoms bond with each other, we must have a closer look at the role played by the electrons in this process. Rutherford's model of the atom provided some clues to the role of the electron. The fact that electrons are found in the vast space surrounding the nucleus means that they are more loosely held than previously thought. There was one aspect of this model, however, that had even Rutherford puzzled. If an electron moves about the nucleus of an atom in a circular orbit, then that electron is actually accelerating. And since it was known that accelerated charges produce electromagnetic radiation, like light and x-rays, it appeared that an electron circling the nucleus should produce electromagnetic radiation. Why did this puzzle Rutherford? Well, consider a satellite circling the Earth above the atmosphere. It can maintain a stable orbit. But if it dips into the atmosphere, Friction causes it to radiate heat and light. It will rapidly slow down and therefore be pulled down by the gravitational field of the Earth. An electron circling a nucleus is not slowed by an atmosphere. But if the electron loses energy through radiation, it should slow down and therefore be pulled by the attraction of the nucleus. Eventually, it will spiral into the nucleus and self-destruct. But this simply does not happen. Was Rutherford's model wrong? The next program will describe how Rutherford's dilemma was resolved. And in being resolved, shed light on how electrons determine the chemical properties of an atom.